Hi, I'm Max Kaiser. This is the Kaiser Report. Did you enjoy those summer solutions? Yeah, I know I did. Well, it's time to get back into the problems. So let's turn to Stacy. Right. Well, you know, the Fed had better hope the solution to inflation is just time. Because remember, they keep on saying it is transitory. Well, their usual solution is giving more and more money. The Treasury is always giving more and more money. Congress, more and more money. So we're going to look at what some of the results that have come out while we've been gone for the past two weeks. We've seen not only inflation numbers hit over 5%, the highest in a very long time since 2008, but container freight rate spike to new extremes up. 500% for Asia, US, Asia, EU since early 2020. And the worst is still ahead. And Wolf Richter uses a quote from Jerome Powell just under this. It turns out it's a heck of a lot easier to create demand than it is to bring supply up to snuff. So uh, we'll go over some of the details on these rates, but uh, they're pretty shocking, Max. Right, yeah, that's a good uh, comment by Wolf Richter about demand, you know, it's always, uh spoken about in Keynesian economics corners that they need to stimulate demand by printing money. But uh, we live in an age now where the supply side of the equation is broken. So we're entering into these supply shocks, whether it could be microchips, for example, or basic commodities are up sharply. There's a food insecurity now by hundreds of millions of people around the world uh, just emerging over the past 12 months because of this runaway inflation, because of the runaway money printing, as we've been saying for a few years. So now people are really coming to grips with the fact that, yep, Kaiser Report's been right about it. What's next? Right, so we'll go over some of the data, the important one to look at there in terms of the uh, container freight rates is from Shanghai to Los Angeles. And so think about this, everybody got a lot of stimulus checks. We covered this thousands and thousands of dollars of, uh, over the past year, a year and two months. And what they did is they bought durable goods. They bought refrigerators, they bought washing machines. And where did it all come from? It came from China. So this is the most important one for this COVID uh, lockdown story and the supply shortages and rates spiking. Average port to port spot rates from Shanghai to Los Angeles soared from around $1,500 per 40 foot container in early 2020 and from a five year average of 2,177 to $4,000 in September of 2020 to $8,000 in June of 2021 and 9,631 in the week ending July 8th, according to Drury Supply Chain Advisors. This would be an increase of over 500% from early 2020. You see, there's two things that have been going on for the last 20 years. Number one, money printing. Number two, China enters mm. global economy. And all that money printing went over to China along with American jobs, but the American consumer didn't notice that because the price of stuff coming in from China, like those white goods, the washers, the dryers, the TV screens, the clothes, was dropping precipitously, a lot cheaper. Well, at some point, you know, as you pour water into a bucket, at some point the bucket is full and then the water starts to spill over. So here we have a situation where all the cheap gains that have accrued due to including China and to the World Trade Organization under Bill Clinton have exhausted themselves. So all the money printing like that water into the bucket is now spilling over as real inflation. But I think the reason this has caught people off guard is that it took 20, 25 years to fill that bucket uh, because bringing China on as Bill Clinton did was really a, a remarkable situation of putting half a billion workers making virtual slave labor into this globalized economy that was all hooked up through the internet. And uh, we just had an amazing crash in the logistics prices and delivery prices. And remember, it was only two or three years ago, we were saying the price of these containers, uh, the Baltic dry index, if you recall, on this very show, two years ago, three years ago, we would all say, oh my God, it's hitting new crash lows. It's so low, it's so low. But now it's all uh, been essentially equalized or normalized. So the money printing is not gonna hurt really badly. The past 20 years, why part of the reason why it didn't catch up was that there was a lot of money printing, but it was all credit. It came from the central bank 
cutting rates ever lower, taking this assets off the balance sheets of the banks and putting it onto the central bank's balance sheet. The past year, we've seen thousands and thousands of dollars sent to every single individual American. We saw those PPP forgivable loans, tens of billions of dollars given to small businesses. This is real money. It's filtered straight into the economy and without a commensurate, of course, goods and services being provided here. So you, that's why you're starting to see the inflation because everybody's spending it, but the only place to spend it is in China. And the volume is uh, quite remarkable. So what you see is the Port of Los Angeles has been setting records in terms of the volume of imported loaded containers. The container volume is expressed in the standard measuring unit of TEU, which stands for 20 foot equivalent unit, where a 40 foot container contains two TUs. For the five months from January through May, the port imported 2.37 million TEU and loaded containers, according to data from the Port of Los Angeles. This was up from 26% from the prior record period of January through May of 2017. So it's a it set a new record high by 26% of the previous record high. You can see the parabolic move. It all started exactly, all of this data started exactly once the first stimulus checks started to pour into American coffers. So it is causing uh, some inflation, it's causing some friction as well, because of course you're starting to see headlines suggesting that it's China that's causing inflation, or you see signs that it's Bitcoin causing hyperinflation. Right, well, <laughs> interesting. Those two bring brought up in that context. Look, China's GDP is up like 18%, and the U.S. is barely positive. And be why? Because China is trying to grow their economy. You know, if you're trying to grow your economy based on manufacturing stuff and selling it, you're going to end up with people working, manufacturing stuff and selling it. If you have an economy based on social justice warriors who are begging for more stimulus checks so they can give it all to China, your GDP is not going to go up because you're not manufacturing stuff to sell to Chinese people or anywhere else in the world. Well, you're definitely going to see, I mean, because we haven't seen this in our entire adult lifetimes. We had this in our childhood of the inflation and it causes a lot of friction, it causes tension because you have a, a, you're flush with money, you're getting a lot of money put in your bank account. You can't deny that there was tens of thousands of dollars put into average households, uh, you know, savings accounts and they're feeling good and they want to go out and spend it. The problem is everybody else feels the same and everybody else is doing the same and there's only so many goods and services for people to buy. So you're also seeing that in the next headline about how much rent inflation is going up. And rent is an important component of the CPI index, right? Well, rent prices are soaring as Americans flock back to cities. Nationwide, rent prices are up 7.5% so far this year to date, uh, 2021 three times higher than normal. According to data from apartments.com, analysts expect rent prices to keep climbing for the foreseeable future, a major burden for renters and a warning sign that higher inflation could linger far longer than the White House and Federal Reserve keep predicting. Right, you know the old uh, pea and shell game. You have a pea and you have three shells and you, <whistles> you're like, oh, which, where's the pea, where's the pea? Well, the, Bureau of Labor Statistics in Washington, D.C. have been playing this game for 40 years, 50 years, where every year, every two years, they have a new definition of how to calculate inflation, mm -hmm. right? They substitute hamburger for steak. They say a computer is twice as fast, so it's half as cheap. They substitute rent for houses. But eventually, instead of having one P to play with in the shell game, it's now three Ps. And every single shell you turn over, it's eh, inflation, eh, inflation, and guess what? Inflation. So all of those hedonic adjustments and all that gamesmanship that has been going on to help the Federal Reserve keep rates low so that the investment bankers and the private equity firms have cheapest possible money to buy other companies for virtually nothing has come to an abrupt end in the form of people starving. So now the equation is really cruel because for every new billionaire, you can make a direct link to X number of starving people, full stop. So yeah, in the United States, a lot of people have, like I said, 
over $10,000 in their savings account. They haven't spent it in the past year. They're ready to start spending it. They want it, they're like, hey, I have 10,000. That's enough for a deposit to move to a new town, to move to a new city, start again. Um, so flush with cash. Well, everybody's doing the same exact thing. And they're all heading to these cities like Boise, Idaho. They're heading to Sacramento, to other like smaller cities, not New York, not San Francisco and you're seeing the rents soar. You're seeing it in Phoenix, this headline here from uh, this quote here, Jason Giroux, owner of 410 Real Estate in Phoenix said, he has managed rentals for nearly 15 years and never seen anything like this. His rental listings are often getting more than a dozen applications. People call him and offer to pay more than the asking price for the rental, effectively creating bidding wars on rental properties. On two recent listings, so many people offered to pay more money that he had all the applicants write down their best offer. Right, notice it's about renting and not buying because one of the fallouts from the COVID crisis has been the private equity groups like Warren Buffett and others buying thousands and hundreds of thousands of properties and putting them out of reach for buyers. And now their only recourse is to rent. And now we're seeing rents rise, but of course, they can't afford to buy houses anymore. So you end up with essentially what would become a hut on the company store on the consumer plantation known as America. Right, well, you're going to be talking to Rick Ackerman who believes deflation is the biggest story, but that's, I don't think it's a consolation at the end of the day. It's like you could say, hey, you know, the good news is there's five trillion or quadrillion in bad debts over here and that's deflationary. It's gonna cause an economic crisis, but your rent is still going up. Your healthcare is still going up. Freight costs are still going up. Your, all, all your goods and services are going up in price at the end of the day. 